Howdy. I'm finally getting around to answering these questions that I got on Facebook and Instagram. Before we get started, it would be super clutch if you could like this video, even though you haven't even watched it yet, but, and also subscribe to my channel, and uh, that would uh, help me out quite a bit. First of all, check out, check out the studio. I literally just tacked that, uh, f that painting on. In fact, I got the hammer right here. Dressed it up a little bit, you know, but let's get rolling into answering some of these questions. So I got them on my laptop here, and so I'll just refer, refer off of them. So number one, uh, Lori asked on Facebook, she said, uh, did you find water everywhere or did you have to hike certain distances to find it? So I'm thinking she's referring to the JMT here. A lot of the big trails are contained or are on uh, this app called Gut Hook. And what Gut Hook is, is I, I kind of imagine it as a little Pokédex. You know, like you used to imagine playing Pokémon and doing that kind of stuff. But basically it's, it's, it's a map of the trail, but along the trail there's they have waypoints on the trail and so it'll be like a little water icon and it'll show you exactly how far away you are from that water 0.7 miles 1.7 miles something like that right and then it would also have it also has the most recent user comments on there and so it, it's good practice to you know if you come along something some kind of a stream that's dry you just put it in the app say hey stream dry and it'll, when you get on to service next, or if you have service at that time, it'll, it'll upload into that database. So Guthook is by far one of the best investments you can make if you're doing a long trail such as the Tahoe Rim Trail, JMT, PCT, CDT, all of those, because not only does it give the water waypoints, but it also will give tents or like uh, camp spots and towns and information about that, information about resupplies. And so that is my primary go-to when it comes to try, where do I gotta find water? You know, there's some trails that don't have gut hook, right? Like some of the lesser known trails. So. For instance, when I did the Timberline Trail and the Lewitt Trail this year, uh, they didn't have, they don't have a gut hook map. So I have to kind of kick it old school there and you know, print trip reports off of uh, either OregonHikers.com or just really just, I mean, when you download your online maps, which I use Onyx Maps, which is a hunting app for it, when you download it, go into your topo layer and then you can see which streams are um, are there. The one thing that there is to note with that is there's a difference between a river and a stream, right? A river for the most part is not gonna, it's gonna be there for the most part, right? So if you see something that's labeled as a river on those maps, you can be fairly confident that when you get to that point, there's gonna be water there. On the other hand, if it's a stream, sometimes there can be seasonal streams, right? And so it's just simply what that means is that they can dry up by, you know, end of July, August, or September, especially if there's been no rain throughout the summer, which is which is frequent in Oregon. So, and those are kind of uh, marked on the map as broken, almost like broken lines uh, for a stream. So like broken blue lines. So that, for me, that's what I have um, interpreted as a seasonal stream. So, you know, not the most reliable water, could be some there, especially early season, but you know, maybe don't count on it later season. So Nick on Facebook asked, so he said, I'd be interested in hearing about the diet for your trips. What are you eating? When do you switch it up? And what do you eat from the wild? So, okay, so a couple different ones there. So <laughs> I, am I am an annoyingly clean eater in real life. And so when I get out on trail, I try to, uh, overlap that as much as I can, but it's pretty difficult. I used to have a giant issue with like eating a ton of sugar in real life. My middle name's Lawrence and my nickname at work was Sugar Lawrence. So, you know, there you go. I take a lot of bars and so you can get a lot of natural bars that don't have a lot of sugar in them, that have a lot of natural 
uh, ingredients in them. Some examples would be an RX bar, a Lara bar, a Pro bar, and if you really want to spend some money, but they are really, really good, are Green Belly meals. So snacks are pretty much covered. I also bring trail mix, and so I'll I'll put almonds and raisins, and I'll mix it myself, and then I'll sprinkle in some M&Ms or something like that in there, just for the M&Ms. I allow myself to eat candy on trail, right? Because it's kind of one of those pick me up things, you know, kind of gets the dopamine flowing a little bit if you're having a rough day. So it's 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 nice to have. So I'll throw some M&Ms in there. I also will. I'm a big fan of Snickers on the trail. Uh, ever since. I was I did a section hike last year and a kid gave me a Snickers bar when I was just bonking pretty hard and it I mean I pretty much ran the next three miles it was it was incredible so I bring those every time and and again another good pick me up especially before a climb I always will try to fuel myself before a, a large ascent especially on the JMT when you're doing it for 10 miles of an ascent right so I will really jam more of those sugary bars or, or just sugar at that time. Not so much for the descents. The descents and just kind of rolly stuff, you can get away with more fats in my opinion. So that's like your trail mixes and stuff like that. But for the most part, your, your quicker burning stuff, I always like to get it uh, on my ascent. When do I switch it up? So that's a great question. For the most part, you know, if you're on, you know, shorter backpacking trips, it's hard to switch it up because, you know, you're out of the woods by that time that you get sick of something. But on the JMT, I will say that I absolutely got super sick of tuna and I packed a mil. I mean, I packed 28 packets of hot tuna and oh my God, the last thing I wanted at lunch was a hot tuna packet. So what's really nice about some longer through hikes, especially when you resupply, is that when you go to this resupply destination, there's things in there that other hikers have discarded. So they're in the same boat as me, they get sick of something and they put it in what's called a hiker box. And so you can go in there and switch some of your stuff out of there uh, for their stuff, okay? And so that's exactly what I did with my tuna packets. I I think I did that. I think I gave got rid of some of my tuna packets. I got like strawberry jam and I started doing one tuna packet for lunch on a tortilla plus um, like a peanut butter and then a j little jelly packet. And that was really good instead of just two tuna packets, which uh -huh. uh, I was burnt out on. So what do you eat for the, from the wild? So that's a great question too. So for the most part in Oregon and in the Cascades and along even the coastal mountains, I know, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the berries and this has just been from an overtime thing. So. Huckleberries are very frequent in the Cascades, especially in August. And so there's red huckleberries, there's blue huckleberries, and they're super good. They look like little mini blueberries, at least the blue ones do anyway. And I like the blue ones better. Red ones are a little tart. Uh, in Oregon, you have, also you have salmon berries, you have Oregon grape, blackberries, trying to think of what else. I feel like I'm, oh, salal berries. So there's a ton in the Pacific Northwest that I'm super familiar with. Now, when I went down to the Sierra, I my goal was to find wild onions. And so I had them um, screenshotted on my phone and all that, so I would be able to identify them if I came up upon them. Well, on my first day, I actually came to the stream and I was going to fill up water and I met this guy named Shroomer yeah, and he was a triple crowner, which means he completed the Pacific Crest Trails, Continental Divide Trail, and the Appalachian Trail. So he's got a lot of miles under his belt, and he said, oh yeah, like there's some onions over there in that stream. And so uh, he's, he said, you know, pull them up, pull them up close to the root, smell them, if they smell and they look like an onion, it's an onion. So that's what I did. And they were pretty much everywhere throughout the Sierra from, below 10,000 feet pretty much. Anywhere above that, it was hard to, find. you know, you couldn't find them. But I think I had wild onion every every single day. I would just go past one and then I would just throw it in my pack and then I would have it for dinner and I would, and I would also have it for lunch. So that was really cool there. So Neil from Facebook asks, I'd like, I'd like to see a breakdown on food for a typical week hike. 
store-bought or personally dehydrated. So I'm actually thinking about doing personally personal dehydrated stuff. Uh, but what I'm looking at, what I kind of rock right now is I will either do a pro bar in the morning for breakfast or I will do, or I'll just make my own oatmeal in a Ziploc bag and then cold soak it and eat that. And that just contains uh, regular oatmeal and then I throw in some extra kind of healthier stuff in there like flaxseed, chia seed, uh, peanut butter, protein, maple syrup and raisins and stuff like that. Lunch usually consists of, I guess I skip snacks. So snacks, Lara bar, trail mix, more pro bars, Snickers, Lunch is tortillas, so a tortilla with a tuna packet, and then also a tortilla with a peanut butter and then a jelly packet is what I've been liking so far. The other thing I actually uh, got to this year was Fritos, and so they're only three ingredients, so they're you know semi-healthy and they're a good kind of salty food to have when you're when you're craving that and sweating a lot. Dinners is I don't do I don't buy the dehydrated meals anymore and just simply because there's nothing wrong with them it's just that they're extremely expensive so I mean they are you know seven bucks a pop eight bucks a pop nine bucks a pop and I'm not gonna pay that every single time I go out backpacking because I do it a lot so what I've been getting recently are nor either nor rice sides or nor noodle sides or ramen and just so any kind of variation of this and you know they're a buck a piece and even less for ramen and then I will bring olive oil in a little container for extra fat and calories and then I'll do a chicken or a tuna packet on top of that and that's my dinner super easy it's two bucks two and a half bucks maybe versus seven eight nine bucks and uh, fills you up just just as heavily so that's what I do for dinner Oh, Neil also asked a couple more questions. So gear breakdown with specifics, including brands you prefer and why. So I'm going to do a later bit later video on this because this that can get kind of get kind of deep. Uh, he asked, where do you read trail reports? So in Oregon, it's the Oregon Hikers Guide. I think that's what it's called. If it's not, I'll leave a link. Dot com. They got real in depth, like you know, down to the point one mile of you're going to see this rock and this little dirt pile. So that's always good if I'm doing, again, something that doesn't have gut hook, I will bring that as, and I'll kind of pull out and copy and paste some of the relevant stuff that I need to know. Another really good one is alltrails.com and I you just make an account and then you can favorite some trails. It's kind of like gut hook where you can uh, see past trip reports from people. The other thing is, is just go on Instagram and search the location that you're looking for and just kind of DM people or comment on their photos and ask them. That's another thing that I do, especially to see what the conditions are like. If it's if you know if I'm going early June or something like that, is there still snow up there or you know that kind of stuff. Appreciate you watching the video. If you have any other questions, please uh, feel free to DM me on Instagram at Chattahoochee underscore, and I will either get back to you or I'll get back to you and then also use it in a video or I'll just use it in a video but you'll get the question answered. I hope you found this valuable. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel and thank you.